Stanford University. Hello, welcome back to Technology Entrepreneurship. In this video, I wanted to introduce a good friend, Eric Case, who's been working on a startup called Domainer. And so, Eric, uh, why don't you get us started by um, explaining a bit about your background and how you wound up here in Silicon Valley and working on Domainer? Uh, sure. Um, so, I'm from Ohio originally. Um, I studied uh, Greek and Roman history in college, actually, because I found it interesting. Um, but technology was always something that I've, that's always been a hobby uh, and a passion. And so I moved out here about 10 years ago and was fortunate enough to um, be <laughs> unemployed and penniless after backpacking around the world and crashing on my aunt's couch uh, when Google acquired Blogger. And I'd been a Blogger user uh, for some years already. And, you know, I kind of, I had the right skill set that they, uh, that they needed when they hired their first uh, customer support team members back in 2003, I guess it was, um, in, I think it was April. Uh, so, so that was actually the first job that I got out, out, out here was at, at Google in 2003. Uh, I had a college friend who was working at Ad, at, in AdWords at the time, and I said, Katie, uh, <laughs> invite me over for lunch and maybe we'll meet some of the blogger guys. And uh, it was very serendipitous. Um, and I went on to work uh, on Blogger for about five years uh, while I was at Google. Uh, I did everything from customer support to QA uh, management to project management, worked on all the localization and the relaunch uh, and the rebranding. Um, and then I, was I ended up as Blogger's product manager for about a year and a half um, before I left in 2008. Um, Great. And how did you get the idea for Domainer and get started with it? Um, so startups and, and uh, you know, that kind of the, the creative energy that's out here in Silicon Valley is one of the main reasons that I always wanted to, to, to end up out here uh, growing up. And so uh, thus, after leaving, leaving Google and, and talking with a number of friends about what they wanted to do after they had left uh, their jobs, um, a, f a few of us, uh, myself, Randy Reddig and Cameron Walters, um, were kind of batting around ideas in, in mid-2008. And Domainer was a, was a thing that Randy and I had prototyped earlier that year um, because, uh, well, for a variety of different reasons. One, um, we, liked, we liked the idea of, of domain hacks. So a lot of the dot-coms are already taken, as everyone knows, but there are 280 or so other extensions that are, that are available worldwide. Um, and you know th there had been several different um, startups and products that had used domain hacks already. Um, Delicious is, is, is one good example. And Flickr didn't use a domain hack back then, but by removing a vowel, they were able to create a great um, brand um, for, for a, a simple word like, like that. So, so we, we kind of had this idea on a whim, and Randy put together a prototype in, in like 45 minutes just to see what would happen if as you type uh, words into a form uh, and you see real-time results returned to you that are based on that top-level domain namespace, uh, it, it was interesting. And we had a bunch of ideas for products that we wanted to build that we you know, ha have, have not yet been able to do. Um, but Domainer, once we started using it ourselves to, to name the things that we wanted to end up building, uh, and we showed it to friends who also got addicted to using it, um, felt like it was something worth turning into a product from that simple little prototype um, into something that actually had a back end that checked for uh, availability and linked out to registrars where you could buy things. Domainer also named itself. We didn't know what to call it, and so we started fiddling with things. And it turns out there's a there's a dot nr. So oh, interesting. So yeah, that's the that's the background for and, Domainer. And so you started it as a side project. Was there considerations about fundraising, and how have you thought about that side of it? Yeah, well, I mean, the three of us were were basically living and working off of our savings back then, and um, we knew we wanted to do something, but we weren't sure what would, we would want to actually raise money and, and do, because you take on a lot of responsibility, and there's a clock ticking, as Chris Dixon put it, uh, as soon as you raise money. So we, we were hesitant. We, we felt like Domainer, for us, was more of a portfolio piece, like it would show what we were capable of as a team with design and product and operations and um, it's a it's a it's a phenomenal it's a phenomenal product a lot of people use it and love it um, 
we 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 thought through a, a number of different possibilities with it. Like everybody knows that that most domain registrars have very very painful user experiences to to register to renew. They're trying to upsell you, you know, all this stuff that you don't need. It's a very unfriendly user experience, and so um, we're huge fans of great user experiences. And so we we definitely thought about. Um, taking you know that that path of, of you know, maybe becoming a registrar um, but that that would have brought a lot of overhead with it um, there, there's a lot of pain that comes with that um, billing is painful um, users right like when you take people's money you have to you know you really have to be serious about what you're doing mm -hmm. and so we we kind of decided that we wanted to pursue other ideas and not necessarily take on like all that overhead so we ended up with a very lightweight um, business model. I mean, I guess it's a, I guess it's a revenue model. Yeah. Um, so, so how did how did you come to the the revenue model, and and what are some of the things that you thought about initially? Well, um, so I mean, Domainer Domainer generates revenue based on affiliate commissions. So 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 we you know as as people use the site and and find domains that they want to buy, they they click out to or we, we send their clicks out to registrars um, who do the actual registration and those registrars pay um, commissions basically for for successful you know domain purchases and um, we we baked this in we baked that in from the start because uh, our goal f for it was to see if we could get it to cover its own costs and the, the, the dot nr domain is actually five hundred dollars a year uh, which is ridiculous so that was our first goal like could could this thing pay for its own you know domain registration each year hmm. and 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 it did and w within the first couple of months uh, it, it was such a compelling user experience for finding domain names that um, that's what people started using it for to, to name things and so um, it's generated revenue since since day one and eventually uh, you know, it reached it reached the milestones where it could cover our California state LLC taxes, you know, each year, and then you know, kind of all of our administrative costs. And um, you know, it's been about three and a half years since we launched it, and uh, these days it's actually paying for all of our rent in revenue. So the 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 margins are great. Um, so are, are there are there alternative things that you have thought about doing or that have come up as options along the way? How how have you um, thought about trying to increase the revenue that it brings in along the way? Uh, so, well, the, there are a couple different ways that, that, that revenue could increase. One is to uh, get a lot more traffic, right? We get a certain amount of traffic and it converts at a certain rate. And presumably, if we got a lot more traffic, it would keep converting at that rate, depending on where the traffic comes from. So we've looked into uh, we only done a little bit of research into ways to acquire more traffic, but really that's that's kind of an arbitrage game. Like, can you acquire traffic for uh, cheaper than the money that it ultimately generates? And so, because the, because the Domainer generates such a you know small amount of revenue in the grand scheme of things, it would, it would cost a lot to do that kind of traffic acquisition. So we've done a couple of little experiments with. I think stumble upon and a little bit of AdWords, but we haven't investigated that thoroughly because it it just seems like the cost would be too high, right? Because we generate so so much so little such a little amount of money per per click. Mm -hmm. um, we've thought about deeper deeper integrations with um, registrars to make the checkout process uh, easier, but again, that's like like that's a lot of work uh, for us engineering wise and operations wise and administratively for for a, a kind of a nebulous um, gain so we've been hesitant to invest a lot of engineering time into those sorts of things um, what we do spend our time on on the product is just making it faster more accurate you know kind of focusing on the core so great I mean, yeah. what what would you say is the most important thing that you've learned along the way as a result of this um oh gosh uh, well, I, I forget who who originally s said that overnight success takes years, um, but it really like like we built it and launched it coming up on four years ago, and and it got a huge spike in traffic um, the day that we launched it, and then a couple days later, maybe a week later, 
uh, the amount of traffic that we got plummeted down to almost none. And it stayed, it stayed down there. Now, granted, we weren't doing a lot of marketing. We weren't trying to generate PR and buzz and, uh, and stuff. And it's a fairly niche uh, product. So it's not like this is, this is ever going to be the, the next great social thing. There's nothing social about this. It's all word of mouth um, how, how, the, how the marketing happens. Um, but it, it, it definitely took a, a year, year and a half um, until, um, until the traffic started growing. And actually, it, it, that, it's accidental why that happened. It was the um, short URL craze that happened with Twitter. Everybody wanted a short domain in order to um, share links on, on Twitter. And so we just added a little bit of regex to <laughs> trim the vowels and like instant um, short domains. And so it sort of, we, we were able to kind of, uh, I guess uh, harness that that trend um, with a simple tweak, and uh, and basically since since then the amount of organic traffic that it gets matches what that original spike was, but it took years to get there, mm-hmm. um, and I, I think this is you, you got to experience that um, to actually know what it means to launch something and then have a great launch and then to have like no traffic after that and you know presumably no signups we we don't have user accounts and, uh, or that kind of thing, but. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, um, if you all are looking for a domain name for your uh, website or product, uh, Domainer is a great service to check out to try and see what's available. Um, so thank you very much, Eric, for coming in and, and sharing your experience with us. Thank you. And one last thing. That, that was actually the original reason that we built this, was to help us name the things that we wanted to work on and build ourselves. So, so it, it's the perfect tool for people who are, who are working on their own projects companies, products, um, you name it. Great, great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chuck. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.